Um, I'm Jean, in case you haven't seen me on one of our videos or something over the years. But um, I'm Jean Wells, Valerie's mom, and I started the store just a little over 47 years ago. And um, Valerie was just about two and Jason just about six. <laughs> Jason's in his 50s now, so... Anyway, it's been a long time, but the reason I started the store was that I had been teaching for um, eight years in the Portland area, and I taught home ec, and I loved teaching. And I had started doing adult ed, and when I moved here and went to do adult ed, um, I did it through the college, but there were no supplies. It was the double mint era, and most of you are too young to even know about that. And so I was going back to Portland to get fabric from a friend that had Daisy Kingdom, where I had taught. And she just said, Jean, you need to open a store. I thought, well, there weren't any teaching jobs over here in the schools for home ec. So I took my money out of retirement, $3,200, and I started the Stitching Post. And I think I did a class the very first week because I love teaching and I think what I like about it is watching people get excited about what they're doing and feeling like I'm contributing to something greater than myself. So that's what I really enjoy. And my tagline for the store from the very beginning was inspiration and education. And it still is today. And we have had a lot of ups and downs. Our latest was COVID, but you know, we've been able to sustain ourselves. And I really think it's because of the vision. And I think if it hadn't brought so much joy to me, maybe I wouldn't have kept doing it. But I'm kind of stubborn and I have a lot of staying power. Um, and, uh, I kind of take after my dad, he was an entrepreneur, but I am so happy that the store is what it is today. And it's really interesting for me to watch it evolve under Val's leadership. And during COVID, she really had to make some big changes in order for us to even survive. And I'm so proud of her. And my two granddaughters also got involved and I remember when it was just the four of us <laughs> filling orders because everybody was furloughed. And the minute I could, when the PPP loan came up, I went to the bank and applied for us and we had our loan in a week and that really helped us. But kind of on to what I do now. Um, I help Val out when she needs me and she likes me to sit in on fabric appointments, which is one of my very favorite things. I love um, seeing what's out there and then thinking what we can do with it. And I find that no matter how old I'm getting, my brain automatically starts up thinking of things that we can do with this fabric or that fabric or something we can promote. And that's really what keeps our store um, interesting, I think, because we have those kind of minds. Val has hired those kind of people too. And um, so I help with choosing, but then I don't have to do everything with it when it arrives. Um, and then the other thing I do quite a bit of, uh, obviously is teaching, and I do online classes as well as in-store classes. And um, I love doing all of that. I don't travel as much and teach as I used to. Um, but I find that there's something so rewarding still about just watching people be excited about learning. So anyway, um, yesterday I spent the afternoon with Val uh, colorizing batiks and reorganizing. And I'll tell you, we were like house of fire. <laughs> Both of us went home and I took a nap. I guess she took a bath. She did more of the heavy lifting. Um, but I'm helping out just with getting the store ready for quilt show right now. But in my off time, um, I get in my studio almost every day and that's a real treat for me. I know people used to say, oh, where are you going to travel here and there? And 
I traveled a lot with my teaching as it was. So I said, no, I just want to go to the studio. Um, but this is one of my recent works. I taught a class um, into the woods and I just got very interested in how I could capture um, more the feeling of what I feel. And we were on a fall hike and um, at Clear Lake, which is up in the high mountains. And it was all misty and the trees had lost their leaves and there was just these skeletons and branches, you know, but they were all bare, the leaves were on the ground. So I came home and put this together. And this is a very, very old vowel fabric from 25 years ago. It was a batik. She designed batiks at one time. So, you know, this was really fun for me to do. And then this is my first attempt to machine quilt with a heavier weight thread. And I used the 12 weight sulky thread that we carry at the store. And I practiced and practiced because I knew I was going to have contrast. I wouldn't be quilting with matching thread because I wanted these little branches to show. So I took my time and quilted this and I'm so proud of the quilting on it because I had never done anything like that. And I am in my late seventies and I'm still learning new things. Now, another um, quilt that I love, I drug this one out since I kind of had a tree thing going, but um, we uh, like to go on walks with the dog and there's um, a walk across the meadow at Black Butte Ranch that we love. And there's all of these willows and they are such resilient plants. I mean, it can be dead of winter and there'll still be, you know, a lot of the old dead ones holding up these green shoots that really are waiting for spring. And I just love that. And then occasionally there will be like more of an orangey color one. Well, I decided I didn't want to do it just like the willows. So I used magenta with uh, some of my indigo fabrics and then really tried to capture that green that you feel with the willows. And I was thinking about myself. I could probably go on and on today, but I really enjoy finding different kinds of color schemes and not relying on the color wheel for, okay, this is a triad or this is analogous. Um, I like to just let color kind of speak to me. And this little piece that I did that just has stitching, um, I had been at a convention and took a picture of a manhole cover in San Jose that all the pavement around it was cracking. And I thought it was really interesting. But this palette came from a painting that I saw where the colors had started mixing. And I'll grab it real quick and you can see. So this was the colors. But I threw in periwinkle blue because I just felt it needed something. And I had no idea what kind of pattern to stitch or anything. It's really more like a sampler. I machine quilted first just to kind of nail it down. And then I added all this funky little stitching. And, you know, it's just a little wall hanging for me. It's not for anything special. But I like playing around with stitch as well as color. And then this little piece, um, this was um, some rust dyed fabric that I had that you have to almost just let the, the fabric speak to you in terms of design because parts of it don't look so good. So I cut out this circle and then just played with the whole circle idea and used that um, just regular sewing thread for my stitching on that one. And I loved this fabric that was in the middle here. So I'm just letting it hang down here. And here's the name of the designer. It's Nanny Earl. Um, but I just obviously like to play around. Uh, and I want to show you one more thing. Um, because um, we go on lots of walks and things. And since I was a little girl, I've been picking up rocks. And I've always had rock collections. And I'm getting ready for a show this month with Val. And so this is a rock quilt that I'm doing the hand stitching on. And the background fabric is an antique um, 
kimono. It's a heavier fabric. And um, so I'm really, I wanted lots of it to show because I thought it was really interesting. And then I thought I'd share one more thing since you were here. Um, on my walks, I'm always picking up little stuff. <laughs> And so last year I started making, like, I took just, you know, see-through type vases. And here I have rocks down here. And then here's a pine cone and some tree bark um, and some yarrow. And this is an Oregon grape leaf. And then, of course, I love our uh, lichen that's on the juniper and pine trees around here. Um, and I have this just sitting on my table where I sew, and I change things out every once in a while, but I have little jars of rocks and shells all over the place too. So that's what I'm doing these days. And um, I'm just thrilled that I still get to be involved with the store and that I have the energy and the brains <laughs> to do it. And um, I just love watching what all of you are doing. And when you share with me things that you've made, uh, it just makes my day. So keep doing it. And maybe I'll see some of you in the classroom sometime. And I'll see you at Quilt Show for sure.